Now, Lou, let me ask you your opinion now, if it changed at all, from back in the day, ages ago, when you had this debate with Joe Rogan with MMA versus boxing. That's how I remember you when I heard you on the show and uh, when I heard you were coming on the well, show. That's... I hope you remember more. That, that was like a decade ago. <laughs> I yeah. know. I know. Listen, I hate to bring it up, but as an MMA guy, I'm like, oh, that's the boxing promoter that was on the thing with Joe. So a lot of MMA guys uh, will say that's how they're gonna, you know, uh, recognize. Well, look, first of all, I, th I think your sports evolved. Yeah, 100. percent It did. You know, and I think it's, uh, I, you know, and and look, I I, I watch now, and I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not a, I wouldn't say I'm a fan. I mean, I, no. I might be a casual. I probably, because I'm in the combat sports industry, probably watch as much as a casual MMA fan would watch. But, um, you know, there are guys I enjoy watching. I, 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 get, I get mixed martial arts a lot more than, than I, get, I got them years ago. Um, until I, I started leaving my training sessions uh, beaten to a pulp oh. and, and <laughs> having, to lie in, having to lie in ice water, oh. um, I, I was taking MMA, some MMA oh. lessons for a while from a guy named Glenn Rubin on Long Island, who was a great, great, great sensei. Well, um, on Long Island, Lou. I, I have to admit I gave up, but it gave me a new appreciation for, for a lot of what goes on um, in an octagon or, or, or in a cage. And, and, and um, you know, I, 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 feel, I do feel differently. I mean, I'm, not a, I'm still not a huge fan, but I, but I do feel differently. There are, there are guys, I, you know, there are certain MMA fighters I'm, uh, I enjoy watching more than others. I, I like the stand-up game and... Sure. And, and, and the kicking uh, probably a little bit more than I like the grappling. Um, Did but, you, but, yeah, I think, I, I think you know, my, my attitude has absolutely evolved. Lou, you know? your buddy Glenn on Long Island, did he show you any jiu-jitsu at all or no? I mean, he showed me a lot of stuff. I mean, he, yeah. he, he, was, uh, he crossed all sorts of disciplines. And actually, he had me in great shape for a while, but then <laughs> I, like, I, I mean, I really got beaten to a pulp. I mean, yeah. like, he, like, you know, I, 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 like, wound up with, you know, torn ligaments, and you know, I was coming back. I could barely walk. Hey, I'm dude. I'm 58 years old, man. It's like, <laughs> it's a, you know, it's like shit. Just doesn't like you don't recover the same way. No, and, no um, I, I hear you. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't want to say I sort of like, like you know, punked out, but I punked out. You know. Also, I wanted to ask you, too, about boxing, too. One thing with boxing, like, I used to love it, and then I, I know for me, I'm much more UFC and MMA now. What, the boxing. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. You get a better chance of of like getting an honest decision in MMA. Well, that you know, it's like, funny. That's exactly oh, the direction I'm going in. You, you have a hundred percent better chance of, uh, of watching something and, and, and you watch that you, you pretty much could tell who won and then they announced the decision and the right guy won. <laughs> and, and, you know, I've said this many times and I don't want to shit on people that work in my own industry, but I, I would, for the most part, can take three grammar school kids, situate them around the ring like they're judges, and just say which man or woman won, and I'm going to trust that decision more than I'm going to trust the scores of most boxing judges. You know, because I don't watch a lot of boxing anymore. The last fight I watched was uh, uh, Alvarez against Triple G, and I thought that, you know, it was what a horrendous decision. And the, the, I guess it was the one woman who had scored well, I, it. I think you're thinking of the first time. They, like, like, I mean, yeah, I watched the last one. Oh, did they yeah. fight again? I don't even know they fought. What happened in the no, second they fought, one? They fought, they fought twice. The first fight... Um, there was no question, and I think that's probably the fight you're talking yes, about. Yes, it Adelaide is. Adelaide Bird. Yep. See, Adelaide Bird, and I got nothing against the lady. She's probably a nice lady, has a nice family, probably a nice person. Dude, she's been, like, there, her decisions stink with consistency. Why is she still judging? Yeah, she's terrible. And, and here's the answer. Only in boxing. Oh, there is, there's no, like, checks and balances on, and, and by the way, there are also so like I'm a promoter, so I could take advantage of it, but I'm not a fucking dirtbag. I'm just not not who I am. I don't I don't want to affect the decision in a fucked up way. But but when like there are no standardized hotel accommodations or or travel accommodations, and a promoter can put a particular judge in a, a Motel Six or put the same judge in the Ritz Carlton, um, you know that wouldn't ha that doesn't happen with referees or officials in other sports, and. and and then you have judges and officials going to conventions for the, for the ratings organizations that give out the belts. So the officials sort of know who's the big money attraction, who's the guy that everybody wants to win. And there's, they're, 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 you know, Canelo gets the benefit of every decision. The first Canelo Triple G fight was an atrocity of judging. 
I mean, I mean, anybody in their right mind who watched that first fight Disgusting. and thought that Canelo won the fight doesn't know shit. Right. Now, now the second fight, it's a little bit different. And and, and, and in boxing, you know, we used to, we're so used to robberies and we're so used to messed up scoring that people scream robbery constantly. There's a difference between a close fight that reasonable people can disagree on right. and a robbery. The first Canelo Triple G fight was a robbery. Triple G won that fight and... Yeah. And the decision wasn't righteous. The second fight, I thought Triple G like squeaked it out. I had him ahead by a point or two, but it was so close that in reasonableness, um, I wouldn't call the fact that Canelo got the decision in the second fight a robbery. I would just say it was a close fight, and I didn't see it the same way. Was she um, on that? Did she judge the second fight too? I don't remember, man. I don't pay attention. But like, I want to be honest with you. It's it's really messed up because you can't. You you almost cannot watch a boxing card any longer without seeing some example of horrendous judging on that card. I mean, it's not a, a, a an infrequency. It, it, it's There's way too much regularity of bad scoring. And I want to tell you something. I, like more so than the emergence, you know, people for a while wanted to say, oh, MMA is going to hurt boxing. That, that's one of the things I think that I was right about and Joe was wrong about when we had that debate a long time ago. Boxing's done it to itself. MMA's not done anything to boxing. Boxing's done it to itself. Lou, one thing, like, hold on a second. Pardon, I, I, I agree and I disagree because I think, I, I think that the, the, it, the one thing that MMA does so well is they give you fights that you want to see so they're taking the proactive stance and, and making a fight happen when the fans yeah, want but, it, but, 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 but boxing has also yeah, you gone got, the opposite and not done it. I'm not using a legal term, right? Yeah. What I'm about to say is not in the legal sense, even though I went to law school, it's, it's in, the, it's in the, 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 the common kind of okay. sense. The UFC has a corner on the market for a lot, to a large extent. You know, it's almost a monopoly. It's not a legal monopoly, but it's, it's the, the, you, you got the most powerful by far sure. entity in mixed martial arts. I mean, it's not killing the UFC when a when a Bellator or, com, or a Combate uh, athlete, you know, it, it can't compete with the UFC athlete sure. because the majority of the biggest names and the top guys are fighting UFC. So, and, and also when you're in a position of control, you you know, you could pretty much cause the guy to have to fight another guy. Sure. Boxing's got no ultimate authority. It's got no one organization. It has no most powerful entity. It's the wild fucking wild west. And it always has been. And that's one of the things that's, that's worked to the detriment of the sport. There's nobody looking out for the, the, you know, the betterment of the, of the industry as a whole. And there's nobody really looking out for the fans. And also, now, what are you promoting to you? Because you have your, your, uh, you're on Fight Pass, correct? Yeah, I'm doing a, I mean, I've been doing a, since I became a boxing promoter and I, I left HBO where I was, you know, for most of the you know for the entire 1990s, pretty much I was head of, head of programming for HBO Boxing, and I was buying the the boxing for HBO. Um, unfortunately, HBO has now gone out of the boxing business. Um, but but since I've been on my own, I've been doing a boxing series in the New York area, primarily called Broadway Boxing. It's the longest running grassroots boxing show uh, in the country, and I think it's one of the best. And we're going to, you know, I'll be this Wednesday night, April 10th, will be the first one that's going to be streamed onto UFC Fight Pass. And I'm, I'm pretty excited that UFC Fight Pass is going to be doing some more boxing. And I'm excited that they're going to be picking up the series, um, at least for a few shows, to check it out. Well, Dana is a big boxing fan. I think Dana used to box years ago. And he may have started in Boston as, as a boxing promoter. No, so he's a legit, but he's a, yeah. Dana's a legit boxing fan. He and I have like, you know, had a had dialogue for years and, 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 you know, talked about the sport and stuff. And his son, I think is boxing. Oh yeah. Is he? And yeah, I think so. I think his son's doing mm -hmm. some boxing uh, as an amateur now. And then Dana has used boxing as a workout. And it, he's a legit fan. Hey, look, to some degree, I think Rogan's a fan too. And, and I'd love to go on Rogan's podcast yeah. and, Hang out with him for an hour or two. It'd be, probably be amusing. Oh, Rogan's a legit boxing fan. I know. I know him very well for a long time. And uh, I've been. On, we we did something. I think we were uh, watched the Triple G uh, Alvarez fight together uh, on, on one of his podcasts. Yeah, no, he's a real boxing. Yeah, but, but, but when you go back to that first Triple G, the first fight with Triple G and, and Canelo, when you sit there and you watch an athletic event and you know what you saw, and you enjoyed it, and you're waiting for the decision that that comports with what your eyeballs registered. And then they announce something that is just not in, 
in the realm of like possibility right. in, in, for any reasonable person. That you hear scores that that are not at all reasonable. Yeah, like that sort of takes away the joy of that athletic competition. You it, know what I mean? It made me and, not like and, boxing. That like and knowing that the corruption that has existed again, maybe not as much as it used to, but that outside stuff made me not enjoy boxing anymore. And I guess when UFC was there, I had something now I could watch, and I just I couldn't enjoy boxing for the same as I used to. Well, I get that. I mean, I, I do, and I, I think that we have to. There's the, the, the problems that I would have identified. Here's the problem with boxing. The problems I would have identified 25 years ago are the problems I would have identified 15 years ago or the problems I would have identified five years ago, and they're still the fucking problems. And we haven't addressed them, and we haven't fixed them. And there are still too many ter- terrible decisions. There, there are still, there's still too many conflicts of interest. Um, there's, there's, there's what appears to be corruption. And if it's not corruption, it's utter, um, incompetence and, and there's no excuse for incompetent people to be appointed time and time again to the same positions. Um, so it, it, you know, we, we got, we got to do better. I think it's a great product though. I think it's a great sport. Yeah. I mean, I still, I love boxing. I just don't like the politics of it. And as a fan, um, what I find objectionable as a fan uh, is the kind of stuff that doesn't surprise me turns off a lot of people. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I shrug my shoulders because I'm so used to it, man. I've been a little bit hardened by 30 years, nearly 30 years, be 30 years in December in the boxing business. I mean, I'm friggin' jaded. But, um, you know, other people have alternatives now. And, and I, I think we got the best product. But you know what? We, we sully our product and we dirty it and we, we make it a little bit less attractive by not policing ourselves well. Right. Well, I'm happy you guys are going to be on the uh, UFC Fight Pass live streaming. I like that everybody's getting along now. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Who would have thought it from back in the you day? You like combat sports. You like <laughs> combat sports. You know what I mean? Yeah. Look, MMA is mis- mixed martial arts. Stand up boxing, you know, punching, striking is part of the skill set for a good MMA fighter. Um, and, and like, I, I know that MMA fans can appreciate a terrific boxer. I, I think that even boxing fans, we are people that are conditioned to enjoy combat sport. And, and when I gave MMA a chance and I started, you know, watch, I mean, there, there are people I could like pass on because I just don't like their style of, of, sure. of, of fighting, but that's the same is true in boxing. I don't. I don't tend to like guys that are all defense and run around the ring avoiding punches without being aggressive. Sure, Floyd. Um, you know, I don't. I don't in, in MMA. I don't enjoy somebody that goes right to the ground. Well, I, it's now, not my thing. Now, Lou, you know? I know that's not your thing. I'm not. Listen, at 58, I'm not trying to make it your thing. But let me throw this out there, Lou. I live in Long Island, New York. I got a couple of jiu-jitsu academies. I'm no Joe Schmo. I don't want to brag about who the fuck I am, but I am a Hall of Famer, former champion. You could Google me after this, Lou. But listen, yes, Jim Norton. If you, yeah, not Jim Norton. If you want to ever do a lesson with me, I guarantee you, you will be strangling me. I'll teach you, and you'll learn the gentle art of jujitsu. You might fall in love with it, Lou. No, I want to tell you something. I really was when I was training it. I was sort of enjo- yeah. I was enjoying it. And look, I'm not. I'm not the kind of guy that can go to a gym and yeah. like and just not. play with machines. Like yeah. I need to do something that engages me. Like I, you know, when I, I was in much better yeah. shape when I was a younger guy and I was playing softball and and and, and you know basketball with the guys yeah. even in my thirties. But like when you know when it comes down to going to a gym and just having the discipline to do like circuits and stuff like that, I find it boring as hell. Not when fair. I when I started training with uh, you know with Glenn, I got myself in some really good shape pretty quickly because yeah. he demanded it. But also, you know, I enjoyed it. It was like yeah. a learning uh, learning stuff and learning a a new discipline is sort of fun. So, uh, yeah, I might take you up on that, bro. Right, Anytime. One, one more question before we let you go. And just tonight, to... 8 p.m. Eastern time, uh, UFC Fight Pass, Broadway Boxing. Check it out. Yes, Even that... if you're an MMA fan, check out a little boxing. Yeah, yeah, Tabella Entertainment Broadway. Uh, make sure you support that. One more question, and you may or may not know this. When MMA was fighting to be legalized, and it really fought hard, tooth and nail, was boxing in any kind of a way fighting the legalization of MMA? You know what, man? No. And I'll tell you something. Not that people wouldn't have wanted to, but there is so little. Like, boxing doesn't do anything as an industry. Okay. Like, there is no, like, unified front 
whether it's fighting something or supporting something or trying to change something. So, like, that's really, I'm giving you the truth. Like, do I think people wanted to see MMA legalized? There were a lot of people, I'm sure, didn't. Yes. But were, were people out there actively fighting it? No, because boxing doesn't have his shit together enough to go out there and actively fight anything as, <laughs> as one voice. All right. All right. Well, thank, Lou, that's you're an honest, honest. That's actually the honest answer. You're an honest guy, man, and I really, really enjoy talking to you. So, uh, thanks for calling in, and good luck with this. I, I hope this works out. No, thank you, man. I, so, you know, so do I. And, and look, I, I actually think it's a cool thing that that Fight Pass is is starting to to. I don't want to say embrace boxing because obviously it's primarily an MMA streaming service. Sure. But but like incorporate boxing into the programming yes. that it's putting out there because you know. Boxing is one of the one of the disciplines, as is, you know, jujitsu, as as are many other disciplines that are incorporated into UFC, into MMA, and um, and we saw like the crossover potential of of w- w- when Conor McGregor jumped over to fight Mayweather, and a gazillion people bought that. Sure. that <laughs> um, and, and by the way, McGregor didn't disgrace himself. No, I was going to ask you about that before. He did better than a lot of people thought he would do. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he trained seriously. He trained well. Um, I, I don't think Floyd ever really thought that, that, that Conor had um, a viable chance. But, uh, but I think that, that Floyd's also an entertainer. Yep. I don't think he tanked the event in the sense of letting Conor look really, really good. I just think he turned on the, the you know, I, I think he turned on that, that the spigot and opened that faucet. Uh, somewhere in the middle of the fight, or, or you know, it wasn't surprising it ended the way it did. Right. But but clearly, Connor had a game plan and he executed it pretty well. And and you know, Connor's not a bad stand up fighter. No. And you have a lot of other. I mean, look, I, I watch UFC and I see men and women. Like, let me tell you something. Amanda Nunez could be the hell a hell of a female boxer yeah. if, some, if, if someone, a real serious boxing trainer, got with her on the discipline. I mean, there there are and, and there are other. You know, like you know. Most people pay more attention to the, how much weed the Diaz brothers smoke than the fact that they were pretty good stand-up fighters. And Nick, particularly, had a pretty good stand-up game. And I think Nick could have been a boxer. And, and I think that there are a lot of guys and women in, in mixed martial arts who have enough striking ability and a sense of, of strategy for their stand-up game that, with the appropriate training, could compete. I'm not saying be world champions, but compete sure. on a high level in boxing. All right, Lou, we, uh, we appreciate it. I'll hopefully talk to you again, and uh, really regret having you on. Thanks, Lou. Good talking to you guys. All right, buddy, take care.